Well, carving egg and dart moulding is all very well, but what if you don't want to make a piece of furniture or something like that? Well, here's a great project. This is an um, egg and toast, a breakfast board. So the egg will sit in this little hole here and the toast or your bread sits there. I first saw them in Norway and I've adapted it to a sort of carver's uh, type of uh, board. I call this an egg and dart egg and toast board. It looks like a piece of toast in profile, but also I've colored the outside, a toasty color with coffee. That worked very well. I'm using sycamore here because it's a, um, a hard wood, very suitable for food products, having food on. Beech is another one, uh, maples, cherries, all those very hard woods are very suited, much more suitable than say oaks or limes or, or that sort of wood, which you'd normally find mouldings carved in. The downside is that being hard, we have to use a mallet. So there's a little bit more effort, but essentially the way of working is exactly the same. Um, so I'll start that off with the pattern and we'll take it from there. This is my drawing, my template from which I cut every, every board out of. I thought that I probably could only get three eggs down here. So I cut out my blank on the bandsaw and cleaned up the edge. And I would say I've kept a couple of off cuts like this because I am going to stain the edge here. I used my router as before to run that edge. So there's my molding, there's my blank molding. And I had marked on my paper where the hole for the egg was. I did a bit of experimenting with eggs and holes and I found that this bit, which is called a Fosner bit, goes in straight. This is the best thing to cut that hole with. It goes straight down, straight through. The brown here is actually burning from the bit, which is interesting, because I'm not going to change that. So I've got my blank. I've got my four blanks, how many I want. Nicely cut out, hole, molding. The layout is fairly straightforward. I'm using the same pattern as before, the same distribution of units. I found a center point here and then I've marked off, stepped off just as before, like so, I think you can see that. Um, use my square piece of plastic to give myself square lines to the bottom and then I've marked my three eggs with my molding. So having got that, I've now got my blank ready to carve. Well, what about holding this piece of wood? I hope you recognize this. This we've used in other projects is a piece of wood with a fence and wedges that will hold a relief carving. Well, this is a sort of relief carving um, and I've got it tucked together and held this way like this. So it's held here nicely. But at this angle, it's very difficult to get at. So I've lifted the whole thing up at about 30 degrees on a piece of wood that's held in the vise here down below. So I've now got the, uh, the carving at an angle I can really work at and at a height I can work at. The other thing that's going to happen as I, as I work on this, this will tend to push out like this. So what I've done is I put a bolt through the hole here and I've got a big sort of washer really and a little wing nut and that will just pop down here and what that will do, that will keep this snugly against this wood as I carve. So now I've got my piece set up, I've got my um, a good angle, good position, held nicely, got all my tools ready to go, I'm ready to start carving. So first comes a stab cut which goes from corner to corner need a mallet because it's a very hard wood. Make sure that's all the way down. Then I'm going to repeat that exactly here. And here. Then I'm going to swap and do exactly the same cut on the other side. Line that up carefully. 
corner to corner. So I'm now putting in the angle cuts on each side. This is a very hard wood as I've said so we need to probably go over these again to make sure that's that wobbly cut in here to get some of that out. We need this wood out because we're going to come this way so we don't want to be chewing up with the corners so try and clean that up a bit. Okay, so we can adjust that a little bit as we go along. So I've got my four basic, oh, my three <laughs> basic outlines now. So now I make this cut coming up this way. And again, I'm going to have to use my mallet because this is very hard. So, come at one side, up the other. So this comes, if you remember, right to just, just on the surface here. So this shape creates the shape of the egg. So we'll need to clean that up a little bit down here and down here. I've finished off those three to that stage and now I'm going to switch to a uh, the middle gouge, the sort of narrower middle gouge here. I'm going to come round this way from the bottom, pick up that surface round. Now as I come over, I've got to be careful that I don't dig this corner into the egg. So I come round and then I can use the tool down here to clean up the bottom. So this bit is now the shape of this tool because the top of the cut is wider, it's a bigger curve than the bottom. So the bottom will in fact fit this nicely. So I've got that down the bottom here and on this side. Same, come around here. And I want that to come nicely to the bottom. Now this wood is so hard that it actually will polish very nicely. So you might consider sanding these. You wouldn't in a normal moulding. You would just come straight off the chisel. But with something so uh, hard and polishable, that might look really nice. I dug in there a little bit, so I need to just clean that up. Then I come right up there and right up there and make sure that's stabbed in down here and down here. And then I should be able to take this little chip of wood out here. So what I'm trying to do is, is get this surface here running down in between the egg and the crescent at the side. So we don't want to see any marks on there. So that's it really. I will just work my way around to clean this egg as best I can. Sometimes it's going to be best to come down this way, the bottom part. So I would make sure that this junction here was, was stabbed in. So there's a nice sharp junction there and here and that the surfaces are nice and clean. So I've got a sharp edge there 
a sharp junction there, a bit like lettering really. That will make it really nice and uh, sort of bright moulding. So spend a little bit of time getting each one right. And then we can move on to the next. Now I've got the eggs finished, I can move on to the darts. I'm just going to show you one, but of course it's going to be me repeating all these stages each step. So I've got my lines here, and the first stage is to put in the little eye. So we've got that in here, as before. Push it around, now it's a hard wood, as I keep saying, and so it doesn't naturally pop out so easily, but there it is. And then, of course, I'd go along and I'd punch all these back with my, my little punch. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a different sort of tool to what I used before. I'm going to use a tool that has the same arc here as, as we go around that circle. So I'm going to stab that in, like so. Probably wouldn't need a mallet as it's with the grain. And then, I'm going to make this, using this middle gouge, this middle narrow gouge, this my first cut, repeating those. Then on this side, repeating those. Down this way, my angle cut across here. Make it a big, as big a scoop as possible because you want to come down that middle um, dart and then on this side too okay so that's <coughs> sure that's clean so I've got my darts then I swap to the fishtail gouge and so I'm coming down square this direction now, not undercutting. So I would make my one side of the dart, the other side of the dart, and then I pick up this line here, and I pick up this line here, and I can probably still use this tool and pop these bits out. And what I want to get is a clean edge. and <clears throat> no no sense there was a, a molding so this little there's sometimes a little line here you sometimes see on moldings um that's from the original uh pass with the router or the molding plane so get that up there make sure that's clean so i try and check each one as i go along i can see that needs a little bit more And then on this side here. And when you get your eye in, you'll do this in a couple of cuts rather than lots of tinkering around. So that comes out. <laughs> it should come out, come on. There. So I've got a nice square cut here, square cut here, and I'm just going to take a little bit off there to run that centre line down the centre towards the tip, and that dart is, is done. So I would then be going along cleaning up each dart, creating each dart, and then the carving will be finished. This at the end here, I've got space for really just one dot. 
and I decided not to put in half a dart or anything like that. I was just going to leave that to the end because I think this would be weak and fall off. So up here, I've just got one. Just like that. And that would finish that end off. So when you finish, you can get some very fine sandpaper and just rub that over and remove these lines. And that should be done. I thought the boards would look great if they had a bit of colour around the edge, like a piece of toast. So I uh, got an off cut, this is from original piece of wood, and I tried various colours. And the best one of all, fortuitously, is coffee. So I've made up a little bit of coffee here in the bowl. This is just ordinary, not very nice coffee probably, but perfect for this. And what I'm going to do is <coughs> with a brush very carefully just add it to the edge here like this I'm coming up to the edge from the middle like this so, so as not to get it on the other side and then then when I've done that I'm going to turn it over and I'll do the other edge so I'll do the two edges separately let that soak in coming off the wood, off the edge like that. I really like the colour, I think it's perfect sort of toast colour. I mean, coffee is rather suitable. But what I notice is that as this dries, and you can see it on this one, it's going a lot lighter colour. So this lighter edge here is where it's drying. So I'll let it dry, and then I might well put a second coat on the whole thing. So there's the final colour. This is two or three coats of the coffee. This water in the stain raises the grain, so I've got some very fine sandpaper and just again giving this a little bit of a, a rub just to knock that down, make it smooth. I'm not going to do anything else to these, I'm going to leave it just like a breadboard, natural wood. So with that, uh, the project finished. <laughs>